Good morning. Once again, welcome back to Simple Cooking with Eric. On today, I'm going to show you how to make a homemade blueberry cobbler. Homemade blueberry cobbler. Uh, two people, I, I was telling a friend of mine, well, I was telling the co-pastor of the church yesterday that uh, a friend of mine wanted me to make him a blueberry cobbler and I said I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the store and get the ingredients and make him this cobbler and she kind of went off for me oh, I've been asking for the past 10 years to make me a blueberry cobbler blah 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 so I'm gonna make them a blueberry cobbler uh, for the uh I told you a while back about how to use that the store sell a, a crust that's already made it's already rolled out in a box. Uh, they Pillsbury have a brand that every just about every grocery store have Centrella, uh, Great Value, everybody have their own brand. Any of the brands would do. Any of the brands would do. Uh, Pillsbury brand is just the most expensive, but I have used them all. And this is the simply, again, once again, this is called Simple Cooking with the Eric. And I, my goal is to show home viewers and anyone else how to cook simply, deliciously dishes. I think I'm saying that right. How to cook simple. So what I use, uh, I'm going to use for the blueberry cobbler is a box already uh, made pack crust. And I think it's an upside down. Well, we it, it don't matter. But it's already, and, and, and it tells you on the back how to unroll it, cut it, and, and but I use this for peach cobbler. I'm trying to make them quick and in a hurry. I use you get the same result. I use it really just for peach cobbler. So this is going to be my first time using it for a blueberry cobbler. Uh, but I just wanted to let you all know. So let's get started. And I want to try to hurry up and get through a couple of videos I want to put out today before my granddaughter. Wait, so my granddaughter every morning at around 3 a.m. to 3, 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. She comes downstairs and gets in the bed. Every morning wakes me up, come downstairs whining to get in the bed. And she gets in my bed and goes to sleep. So she's in my room now asleep. And I have my great niece, Hallie, over here also. So them two together, and she came down and got in my bed. Thank God I was getting up to come and start uh, filming. So both of them in my room. My room is like not far from the kitchen. So they in there, and uh, I don't want them to wake up. Because if they wake up, it's a wrap. I couldn't get anything done on yesterday because they was here off the chain. So what you're going to need for the cobbler I'm going to turn the camera. I'm going to work the camera myself from the front. So what are the ingredients I have? Granulated, granulated sugar. You don't need sugar. I got the flour that I made the cake flour. Or I'm going to use a cup, that cup of cake flour. Flour, but regular flour. Blueberries. I'm going to use a pint per cobbler of blueberries. The already made pie crust. Cake spice. And it's cake spice. All cake spice is is a mixture of nutmeg, allspice, cinnamon, and ginger. And I get this from Save a Lot. Save a Lot. I don't know if they're in your area, but they're in, I'm definitely in the Chicago, Indiana area. And it's called cake spice. It's just it's a mixture of all the different spices. And like I said, a mixture of ginger, coriander, allspice, cinnamon, and nutmeg. Lemon juice. Vanilla. And today I'm going to use uh, butter and margarine, uh, half and half. And my butter flavor so now let's get started so what I'm going to do is just take my pan here
hope you all can see me. I'm going to move some of this stuff out the way. So I have a pint of the blueberries washed already, rinsed and washed. I'm going to put those in my pan. I'm going to move some of this stuff out the way so you all can see. You all said, what kind? So you all can see what I'm doing. So, and then I'm going to, the, the thing about using flour and sugar in it, what I'm going to do, and it's not a, uh, you know what, hold on, I'm going to also add this other part of blueberry. That's why it's called cook, simple cooking. And then you know what? A lot of times you'll start out doing something one way and you'll find a different way to do it. Hold on one minute. So how I'm going to make this, two people asked for it. I'm going to make it in these pie pans because I only have two pints of uh, blueberries, and so I'm going to make them in these pie pans instead of this pan. So what I'm going to do, let me rinse them. I'm going to try not to make this too long and dry. I'm going to add a pint of this pie pan. There we go. And a pint in this one. As you all can see, I'm gonna move this. And then what I'm going to do, I don't even need this. This is a cup of flour, that flour I made in the other video. I'm going to add two cups of sh sugar. That was a half a cup, so I need four of these. Two cups of sugar to one cup of flour. And I'm going to whisk, whisk those. And what I have here is a tablespoon of the cake spice. And I remember I told you there's a mixture of nutmeg, cinnamon, coriander, and ginger. I'm going to add that to it. And now, folks, the reason why I add the sugar and the flour together because it will not lump up. The flour will not lump up if you do it this way. If you add the sugar, it will not lump up. And you don't want it to lump up. Um, this is going to be, it's going to help it thicken. And you just whisk that together. I think I got it good. Oh, remember that tapping. Then what I'm going to do, I am going to add... Two and a half teaspoons of lemon juice to each one. Make this a little of lemon juice. Yep. Then I'm going to add I can get it together this morning for a teaspoon of vanilla to each one. Pure vanilla extract made with vodka. Okay. Then what I'm going to add also is a table teaspoon, a teaspoon for a butter flavor to each one also. So so far what I have done I had added uh, 
two and a half teaspoon of lemon juice to each one. And it's just a nine inch pipe, pipe pan with no bottom. I had added a, a teaspoon of vanilla extract to each one and a, a teaspoon of butter flavor to each one. So now I'm gonna get these things out the way so we can put our pie together. Also, people, this is the way you ain't got the flour no, do no rolling in no flour. Very easy, very easy. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a cup of this mixture to each one. I think I can get a cup and a half of each, to each one. Okay. Y'all making a mess, but you know, it's all right. I guarantee you, when I show you the results, you're going to be like, what? Let me just get some of this stuff out of the way. And then I'm going to add a half a cup of water to each one. A half a cup. And normally I wouldn't do it this way, but by me switching the um By me switching the way I, in the pan I did, it, it's, I had to do it this way. And then I'm going to try to... Trust me, y'all, it's, it's, it's going to be okay when I finish. Because what's going to happen is going to make it thick. And this way, you don't have to add dumplings and all that. We're going to concentrate on that one for now. Then I'm going to add a... Um, I want to add, I want to add a half a stick of margarine and a half a stick of butter, which will equal to one cup of fat. That go our butter and margarine. Side, I get it. Listen, this is why this is funny. You ain't got to be cussing all that. Just be real and do what you got to do. And listen, stuff happened in the kitchen. You'd be surprised working in a restaurant what happens in the kitchen. It don't, it don't fall on the table. It falls on the floor and it is reused. So I'm putting a half a cup of um, butter also. I mean, and you probably said that is a lot of, a whole, uh, I mean, a half a stick. That is a lot of butter and margarine. I guarantee you, like I always say, it ain't a dessert if it ain't made with the best of ingredients. And when I mean the best, I mean enough flavorful stuff. So you could use margarine, but uh, you know, I used the margarine to cut down something, but the butter and the margarine get it's gonna give it a great flavor, I guarantee you. 
and we let that just sit on right there. Okay, we almost there for um I don't know if any of my siblings remember, but my mother used to make, I don't know what it was, either it was a blueberry cobbler or a blackberry cobbler. And she used to have this ceramic, it was like a, one of them, some of you all might remember one of them old stone, like the stone bowls, uh, like baking bowls that you put in the oven. I mean, it was, and it was a plum color. And she used to make these cobbler, oh my God, it would be so good that she used to make, um, with this bowl, and so when I was asked to make it, it just brought back so many memories of being a child and growing up uh, on Wentworth, off of Wentworth on 107, and where every Sunday we had Sunday, then my dad cooked every uh, all my childhood, my dad cooked every Sunday. And so what I'm doing, if you all can see, so I just um, open up the, the pot, and all I'm going to do is just put some little strips, you know. It ain't got to be fancy. You can make it fancy, but I guarantee this is so such an easy thing to do. And we're going to use those after the cover. And all it took was this one. Can you all see what I'm doing? And, and really the same steps I just took, you could do a peach cobbler the same way. An apple uh, cobbler the same way. If you want to make it a pie, a cherry pie, same way. The only difference, you will put a bottom crust, and you could take the same unrolled pie crust, put it in the bottom pan and shape it, and, and put your bottom and then put your fruit filling in, and then put your top on the same way that I am doing this. Well, this is like it's going to be delicious. Now, if you go on YouTube and you go on uh, the way they make a uh, uh, blueberry cobbler is they take their biscuit or cake mix and they make a cake batter like, or it's like a, a batter. They put, they butter the bottom of the pan and they put the blueberries in there and then they pour the um, cake batter on top and when it bakes, it rises and it, it's like a doughy, cakey batter on top. And that's the way a lot of people uh, Everywhere I searched on YouTube, that's the way it was did, you know. Um, but that's okay, that, you know, that's the way they like it, but I think this is more our style. So I'm going to get this in the oven, and when it finished, I will show you the finishing product. Until we come back, be blessed. Thank you all for watching. And I don't know, this, it was so long and dry out. I want to talk and I got so much on my mind. And I think this is like therapy for me just to sit here and cook and talk because I love to talk. But I got so many stories, so many things to, to say to people. And yeah, I don't know if it's going to be a cooking vlog, blog, whatever they call it, where I'm just doing a bunch of, bunch of talking. But I will put this in the oven for about um, 354. And I think I'm going to put it in the oven, yeah, on 354, maybe about 30 minutes. And then I will check it and I will get back with you. Until then, peace out. Okay, so let's uh, check our uh, cobblers and see how they are doing. Oh my God, can you hear them bubbling? I'm so glad I put the pan over them because they're bubbling up uh, over the pan. They are ready. I'm going to take them out of the oven. My nieces have woken up. I'm working the camera with one hand and looking for a pot holder. And 
Get up with two little young ladies. Uh-uh, get back, get back. It's hot. It's hot. Get back, Callie. As you all can see, I just took our cobbles out of the uh, the oven. And look how good those look. And I and I forgot to tell you. Before I put them in the oven, I sprinkled a little sugar on top of them. To give them like a little a sugary crust. But as you can see, those are our, those are our blueberry cobblers. And we're going to let them settle and rest for a minute. And then we will have the taste test. All right, folks, we get ready to look. I'm going to taste the blueberry cobbler. I am not a, I am not a blueberry, a blueberry cobbler fan, but we're going to give it a taste and see how it uh, tastes. That's why I have this little bitty bowl because I am not a blueberry cobbler. My niece is, I am not a blueberry cobbler either. So I just want to taste it. But look how thick it had thickened up. Had made the dough with the mixture. I made the oh the dough and everything thickened up. People I'm trying to run this camera by myself and deal with two kids is a is a trip. Just bear with me, bear with me. Okay. Listen, it won't be edited. Listen, this is real life. This is me in real uncensored. So let's taste it. It's thick, it has thickened up and everything. Look at that. I mean, can you see it, Lord? Oh, It's buttery, flavorful, sweet enough. It ain't too sweet. People, follow that recipe. And if you do it the way I told you, you would enjoy this. And the only difference that you will probably do that I didn't, you probably would put both pints of blueberries in one baking pan and then do the same step that I have taken. The same amount of ingredients so, for the, the baking pan, a 9 by 13 baking pan that you will use, you will use the same recipe. You would just double up for each pie that I did. Until then, peace out. Remember to subscribe. Thumbs up. Subscribe, like, whatever. How we go. I need you to subscribe and to view and to thumbs up it. Until again, peace out. Love you all. Thank you all for watching. Listen, it's, it's, it, I ain't going to say it's ghetto. It's just uncensored. Just a lot going on, but this is everyday living. And I thought about it. I, I want to be real and keep it real with you. Love you. Thank you for watching Simple Cooking with Eric. God bless.